Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna talk about what I think is maybe the best golf swing ever. I wanna to talk to you today about Live View Golf. Now you guys hear me say all the time that you need feedback when you're practicing. You need to know if you're actually doing what you're trying to do. And the best way to give yourself feedback ultimately is video. And not only is video the best way to give yourself feedback, but being able to see yourself simultaneously as you're doing a movement is the best form of video feedback. It's the best way I've seen to make changes in your swing and be able to correlate the differences between your feels and your reels. Live view is super easy to use and set up. Simply set it up behind or in front of you. You connect it with your iPad or phone, pop that on the ground. You can actually do your practice, see yourself as you're doing it, the best way to expedite your process. I encourage you guys to check out Live View Golf. We'll put a link in the description down below with a coupon code. All right guys, so let's take a look here at what I think may be the best golf swing uh, on the planet and maybe even ever. So. Um, Victor Hovland here, we're gonna look at a couple of different swing patterns for him. Um, and really what I wanna show you is why I think his swing is so good. Um, his scores have really shown that I think he's done something like 17 in a row, uh, rounds in the 60s, which is ridiculous. Um, why I think his swing is so good, what the mechanical pieces are that I love, and some key points you can take home with you in terms of improvement in your swing. So let's start with the um, just sort of overall pattern that he has, and then we'll dig into the uh, mechanics. So this is actually a couple different views. This is one you can see two-sided, but it gives us a really good angle here of the pattern he has. And really he demonstrates basically everything that we've been talking about over the past couple of years here on our YouTube channel and what you would see in terms of commonalities of great ball strikers of all time. And a lot of that starts with a really good setup. So some of the pieces that we look for here at the setup position of the back of the armpits over the balls of the feet. Uh, I like to see the butt line not super far behind the heel line. The right arm is slightly bent and underneath the left arm in front here. We love all those things. Butt of the club is in line with the belt line and the arms hang more or less straight line down in front of his toes. Lower part of his back is pretty flat and then he starts to round up through the upper thoracic eye line and chin are more down. Those are pieces that we talk about at length um, about what, what a good setup position looks like. So he, he knocks all those out without a problem. And then really what I love for him, other than an awesome setup, is what he does on the way back uh, to set up an even better downswing. So if we watch his backswing and takeaway, we'll see if I drew a line up the shaft at address about through his belt line, you'll see his club face traces up that line beautifully. So he stays right on plane. And really what I love about that is look at that club face angle relative to that plane or that arc he's on. If you've seen some videos we did with Marty about um, having a square club face and um, passive release, things like that, you'll see that we like a club face that's tilted down some amount. Notice how tilted down that is too. Some of you guys would look at that and say it's too closed. That for him sets up some beautiful reactions. You can see here during the takeaway, the right palm and the right wrist is bending back into extension. The right palm is down towards the ground, back of the left hand down towards the ground. Some really, really awesome takeaway pieces. And so he's got his club face again, well turned down here. We like that club face turned down. It sets yourself up to make all of the elite movements later on. And so as we start to work our way up here, um, from here to the top, we'll see another checkpoint that he hits that we really like. One, in terms of depth on the way back, his hands are in line with his right pec and right bicep. That's a checkpoint we use often. And then we'll see the shaft angle. We see the shaft here. Um, if we drew a straight line down of it at left arm parallel during the backswing, we like to see the shaft um, Somewhere inside the ball line, right? If this is the ball line and here's the toe line, we like to see the shaft in between the ball line and the toe line. So it's got a pretty vertical shaft angle. We love that. Um, the depth there again at left arm parallel in line with the right pec, right bicep is perfect. And what I really, really like about this that we've been talking more about lately is that club face angle. And he does that twist away move, which is you'll see that from here, from the takeaway to the top, it's as though his right wrist, as it bends back into extension, um, is pointed more towards the camera right here. So you can see from this angle, it's like the right wrist is pointed towards us and the club face is pointed towards us. And that sets up a club face that's gonna be really square or close. See that same thing, look at that right wrist is pointed towards the camera, club face pointed towards us. That's a something you can start to mimic in your backswing to set yourself up for a great downswing. Keep that right wrist bent back, keep it pointed towards the camera. 
feel like the club face is pointed towards the camera longer. Now, as he goes up to the top, he gets a little more vertical with his uh, lead arm than some players. He's more of a Dustin Johnson there, which is fine. Still got enough depth, uh, more towards the middle part of his right foot. He's got beautiful wrist conditions. You see that left wrist is very flat, slightly bowed. That right wrist is bent back there into extension. And again, a commonality amongst really good swings. The club face here, and if you draw a line down the leading edge, is not parallel to the form. It's more closed or more vertical, more pointed towards the sky, which we would call more closed. Now what that does is set him up for this beautiful transition motion here, which you'll see there, which is his left wrist went more towards flexion or bowed, his right wrist got more bent back, and his trail arm has gone into what, we, what uh, you would call external rotation. So here's his arm, here's his upper arm there at the top, and you'll see that coming down here. Now when he gets the left arm parallel, which we'll see in the Dustin Johnson model, his upper arm now is pointed straight down towards the ground. Right, so see how the elbow is down towards the ground compared to if we go back up in our external rotation video we did, you see the movement of that humerus, that uh, the bone between his elbow and his, his shoulder goes from horizontal to pointed straight up and down. You see that little movement there? That's external rotation. Now he's doing that, you'll see that club shaft stays behind him, he flattens the arc of it. Again, that club face pointed more towards us, the right wrist pointed more towards us, keeps that face in a beautiful position. His wrist conditions are excellent, 10 out of 10. He's got his trail arm back in front. You notice he's maintained the bends of his body, right? He's not standing up from here. He's added some knee flex from there to the top, right? All these things we talk about, look at that right knee increasing flex. The upper body is getting closer to the ground. Here he was at the top. Um, here we go down, so there his head lowers, right? He gets that upper body flexing. Shaft goes through his bicep, he gets the club beautifully back on plane. Club face is still tilted down towards the ground, still maintaining his bends, and then look at the impact position. I mean, that's 10 out of 10, right? You can see the right arm underneath the left arm, the trail arm's bent, the trail wrist is bent, he's lowered his body angles, he's opened his pelvis a bunch, his rib cage is well open, right? Shoulders are more towards square, and then a beautiful exit pattern, where he exits about middle of the rib cage, face pointed straight to the left, look at the tilt. I mean, this is literally, I think the best swing maybe ever, and the best swing on the planet. He's got the most functional swing pattern um, probably of anyone uh, that I've seen. Now, he does have a lot of commonalities with a guy like Dustin Johnson, um, which we'll see here in a second. And if we pull up his uh, driver pattern, and we'll get a face-on pattern here, we'll start to see a lot of really good things from face-on. Now, you can't have that many good things from down the line and have bad things from face-on, right? So. Now we've got him about a foot into his backswing, so it's not gonna be perfect there with the setup. You can tell he's got a bunch of tilt at his setup position. He's gonna have a more neutral to stronger lead uh, grip pattern. Now as he works up from the top, we can see during the backswing he's got good width there, good alignments, appropriate amount of turn and bends, right? At this first parallel position, about uh, 30 degrees of shoulder turn we're looking for, the trail arm bends a little bit. Um, as he starts to work up to the top, Let's get him the left arm parallel. So big, full turn up to the top. Lead leg has worked in some amount. He's got some hip rotation, huge turn, huge depth. And then as he starts to work back in in transition, again, we're gonna start to see some of these movements we like. There's a little bit of a lowering. Notice where his head is at the top, right, in his upper body. There's a little bit of downward loading there in transition as he replants. His lead leg went from being internal a minute ago, so watch that lead leg from here to back to external. He doesn't have an excessive amount of rotation that, or that slide of that pelvis, it stays inside his left foot. And another big commonality amongst these really good ball strikers is that trail elbow being ve uh, very visible underneath the lead arm. So see the right elbow underneath the left arm? Something else we talked about in our external rotation video. Club face very square here, again early, really good wrist conditions. And from here through impact, that sets himself up to be able to do everything else that everyone loves, right? The handle's gonna be well forward, the release pattern's gonna be excellent. He's got this drive hold pattern, right, where the lead arm's gonna be a little more bent. You see that in a lot of really long drive guys like a Jamie Sadlowski. Lead elbow's more at the target. Kelvin Mihira has talked about that at length. Um, trail wrist is still bent there, trail arm is still bent, and very, very stable through the impact zone here reaching full width and extension at, um, towards the target, right? Full extension of his pelvis, full extension of his body from here into the follow through. So just, I mean, awesome, awesome movements, exactly how you would draw it up. Now, when we look at his pattern, you would see a lot of similarities in there to uh, a guy like Dustin Johnson, right? So if we pull up the Dustin Johnson model, 
and we take a look here and slow this down, we would start to see a lot of the same pieces, right? We see the club face being tilted down. There's some little, you know, not exactly the same, but you'll see the, the club face being tilted down here. We see the right wrist and the club face being more back towards the camera, very square club face from here. He gets a little more vertical at the top. And then again, we'll see a lot of these same movements. There's gonna be a lowering of the upper body. The upper arm is gonna go external. Look how close that club face is. Again, that's something you can mimic in terms of getting that club face pointed at the, at the ball longer as you start to work back. Now look at his trail arm there, right? So same sort of piece. As we work into the top, his trail arm, that upper arm, that humerus, went from here, parallel to the ground, to getting much more back down in front of him. So by the time he gets to left arm parallel, his elbow's pointed down towards the ground. You can see the club face is looking back at the camera and so is his right wrist. That's another key movement. Not only can you do that right wrist club face looking at the camera during the back swing, you can do it as you start during the down swing. Keep that trail wrist bent back and leave that club head behind you. And then again, we're gonna see the same sort of movements. Because he's in this position, he's gonna have the same sort of release pattern that Victor has. The club face again being tilted down during the delivery phase, dictates his ability to get the handle forward, to rotate, to have the release pattern we all like. So he's gonna have a lot of those uh, same pieces there. And what I really like, and that you can uh, start to take from this as well, is gonna be some of those looks from down the line in terms of where the club face gets. So let's see if you can see this from here a little better, where that club face, you know, it almost appears for Dustin and Victor, right, with these swings. The club face and the feels you can take for this is that it points at the ball longer. Right, it doesn't rotate open as much. The club face stays pointed down towards the ball. And then you take your right wrist and club and point it back towards the camera. And then as you start down, you point it back towards the camera again, right there. So the wrist and the club face are pointed back at the camera, both at left arm parallel during the backswing and the downswing. That's a commonality that both um, Dustin Johnson and Victor Havon have. Uh, so same sort of pieces here. Keep the club face pointed at the ball for longer. Point the right wrist and the club at the camera, left arm parallel point it back at the camera again, keep the right wrist bent back. That will enable you to get a lot of the pivot and rotation pieces that you want in your own swing. So hopefully you learned something from this. Hopefully um, you can see some things from Victor Hovland's swing that you can use. He has one of the best swings, if not the best swing that I've ever seen in terms of functionality. And I think the early success he's had will continue on uh, looking forward. I think he's probably got some majors ahead of him. So uh, we're excited to see how he does and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hey guys, thanks for watching today's video. If you liked the video, do us a favor, click the like button down below. Click the notification bell. Also, please subscribe. Thank you guys for watching.